Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Daybar Bethlehem Cathedral, a church that proclaims that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify your name. We extol you, Heavenly Father. You are high and lifted up. Your train fills the temple. Father God, we thank you that we come into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you and we bless your name. We thank you, Father God, those attending in person and through various campuses worldwide. We thank you, Father God, that we will hear the anointed revelatory word that will save, heal, and deliver. We bless your name, hallelujah. Father God, you be the glory, to you be the honor, and to you be the praise. He who was and is and is to come, the almighty. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the King James Version of the Bible, Psalm 33, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 33, verses 1 and 2. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Praise God. So far, the scriptures. Now join our worship team and our musicians as we enter further into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask that you get with us. Those who are in the sanctuary and those of you who are at home watching, join us in our worship service. What a mighty God we serve. Isn't he? Do you believe he's a mighty God? Yes.
your Holy Ghost come on down. ultimate price on the old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame yes Woo.
become so beautiful. Come on now.
There is something about that old rugged cross. Yes, there is power in the cross. There's redemption in the cross. There is salvation in the cross. Jesus paid it all on the cross for you and I. So let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise because he's worthy for what he did on the cross. Salvation is ours. Hallelujah. 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 Let us, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation, oh God, that you have given unto us. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ who paid it all on the cross of Calvary for us, oh God. Now, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would just continue to bless us. Continue to give us insight and foresight, oh God, into what you have for us, into the better me and the better you you've called us to be in this year, Lord. We thank you, oh God, that we have love one to another, oh God. So let us flow in the love that Jesus has freely given to us. So we thank you, oh God, for Daybar Bethlehem Cathedral, oh God. We lift up every need in this house, oh God. We pray, oh God, for our family and our loved ones, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you, oh God, would continue to bless us and keep us in perfect peace. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen us, that you would empower us, that you would give us, oh God, everything that we need for this season of excellence, oh God. We thank you because you are leading us and guiding us. So we thank you, Lord, for everyone here today, everyone out there viewing us online, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you would stop by every heart, every house, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and that you would bless as only you can, that you would move as only you can. We thank you, oh God, for all that you're going to do in us and for us. We thank you for the leadership of this house, oh God, for the elders, oh God, for the ministers, the deacons, the leaders, oh God, all those that are in place, God. We pray, oh God, that you would strengthen us right now. Give us, oh God, everything that we need. Give us what we need to be the mighty people of God you've called us to be. You have called us. You have positioned us. You have established us. Now, Lord, use us. Use us to touch other people, Lord. Use us to touch our family and friends. Use us, oh God, to be the voice that will speak, oh God, into the lost and the broken, to the hurt, oh God, and those that are in need of you, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you would give us strength, strength like it all to bless us on every weak and leaning side, to be the people of God that you've called us to be for such a time as this. And Father, we thank you for all that you're going to do. We pray right now for overseer and pastor, oh God. Kid, we pray right now a special prayer for overseer. We pray that you would touch him, oh God. Well, oh God, we pray a healing touch upon him, oh God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. Move in his body like never before. Give him strength like no other. We thank you, oh God, for all that you're doing in his life and through his life and for his life. Bless their home. Bless their life, oh God. Bless them in all that they do, that they will continue to give you and you alone the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Father, as we pray, Lord, we lift up the angel of this house, Bishop H. Curtis Douglas. We pray right now a special anointing and blessing on him. Strengthen him, fill him, guide him, order his steps, oh God, in the way that you've called him to lead your people. Father, you called him for such a time as this. Now bless him. Bless him in everything that he touches, everything that he's been praying for, for his family, oh God, for his home, Lord, for his finances, for his health. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch him right now in everything that is on his heart for this year, oh God. Do it in his life. Do it for his life. Blow his mind this year with the way that you're going to bless him. Blow his mind this year with the way that you're going to use him. Blow his mind this year in the open opportunities that's going to come his way to bless your people. And we thank you, oh God, for all that you're going to do for your people. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. And let all God's people, let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. I want you to put your hands together and give God a praise in this sanctuary. I want you to put your hands together where you are in your home. Where, come on, praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him just because he's worthy. Come on and praise him. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. Come on and praise him. Sunday is God's payday. Friday is your payday, but Sunday is God's payday. It's when you give him what he deserves because he's been so good to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Glory to God. Glory to God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. I want to hear you. I want to hear you through the cameras. I want to hear you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. With the fruit of your lips, giving thanks to his name. We don't have to bring a donkey. We don't have to bring a cow. We don't have to bring a sheep. All we have to bring is our praise. Out of your belly, let them know you're grateful. Out of your spirit, let them know you're thankful. Out of your mouth, express to him that you know he's been good. God has been good. Yes, he has. God has been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Okay, we get ready to move on, but I tell you, after that, that, that old rugged cross, I just feel stirring in my spirit. I just feel a stirring in my spirit. I want you to remember that the cross before Jesus was a sign of shame. You know, nowadays, everybody wears a cross. Ministers wear crosses. Rappers wear crosses. Heathens wear crosses. But before Jesus, the cross was a sign of shame. Cursed is he that hangs on the cross. But Jesus took what was a sign of shame and made it a sign of glory. Hey, hey, hey. And that's what he did with your life. That's what he did with your story. Because when Jesus came into your life, he turned around the narrative of your life. And that which was a mess now has become something that is a message to other people. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus and the fact that he can turn your life around. Oh! Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so, so we have a couple things to do today. There's a lot going on. Uh, we're about to take in, for the first time in over three years, we're about to take in new members. I know that's right. COVID hit and churches closed on March 15th, 2020. And from then until now, it's almost about, almost three exact years. Uh, we've gone through so much and, you know, human attention pan is as such, we forget how terrible it was during COVID. But I, I did not forget preaching to an empty church. I did not forget what it was like to be in here with just four or five of us, the musicians and the audio people, and everybody else was at home, and the church was empty. But God is good. Our church has come back together. We're, we're growing not only online, but we're also growing in person. And so we're getting ready to take in new members. But before we do, I want you to find as many people as you can to your level of comfort. Whatever your level of comfort is, find as many people as you can and just greet them, whether you want to hug them, whether you want to high five them, whether you want to fist bump them. But greet some people and let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. That's good, that's good. Give somebody some love. So we're gonna go. The Jesus in me. Uh huh.
so easy. The Jesus in me sing. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Jesus in you. Uh huh. Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. Ah, uh, so easy. So easy. So easy. So easy to love. Put your hands together, bless the Lord. You may be seated in the sanctuary. I'm going to turn this part of the service over into the hands of Minister Beverly Stewart, who is going to lead us as we welcome our new members. So put your hands together for new members. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Bishop Douglas. It is my pleasure this morning. Grace and peace, Grace and peace. It is my pleasure today to take this opportunity to welcome our new members. There are some people, like Bishop said, they've waited three years for this. So I am so excited. They are looking forward to this. I've had conversations with them, and they are so excited. So let's walk right in. Let's get this started, get the show on the road. Thank you to Minister Heather and Minister Greg, who are part of the team and helping out today. I appreciate it. First person, Sylvia Roberts. Marcia Bramwell. Lisbeth Kreese. David Jean. <laughs> Kayla Carpenter. <laughs> Courtney Bradley. Linda Brown. Defrendre. Doreen Parsons. And she's coming along as a family affair with her daughter. because they did the training three years ago, pre-COVID. So I am excited because some of them, they're already functioning, they come in, they're part of the membership, and they are already working. So, Andrea McLaughlin. <laughs> Keith Rowe and his family, and let me 
Say that's Deacon Keith Brown. And his family, Nisani Roll. Naomi Roll. Rachel Roll. Noah Roll. And Sarah Roll. Darvin Vizcarando. Winsome Murphy. And we had some people that couldn't make it today, so they are watching virtual. We have David Martley. <laughs> Jennifer Nakia Boone. Denise Lashley. Beverly Spence. And Abony Pennant. Now, just let me mention, Abony Pennant is going to be a virtual member, so we are happy we're having everything done online, streaming. So we are happy to have a virtual member. Um, Abony lived in New York, moved to New Jersey, so and didn't want to give up her membership. So we are happy to welcome a virtual member, Abony. Thank you. Well, could we put our hands together for our new members? That's right, that's right. Stand and let's welcome them in. Welcome them in. They have, they have, they have been through, through even, you see, they've been through teaching and classes. Um, they know our p policies and our procedures. They have, no, no, David. She needs to wear her glasses more, that's what it is. <laughs> Brian and Beverly Davey. My apologies. So, so they have been through the classes, they have been through the teaching and the training, they understand uh, that, that God has called them to this place and we are so thrilled for them. Can we put our hands together for them one more time? The, the next thing I'm gonna do, I take membership very seriously. Some of you have not seen this because it's been three years. But when you join the church, you're coming from one of two places. Either you were not a member of a church and you were in the world, or you were part of a different church. And now that you're coming in, each church has its own spirit, has its own style, and has its own, what we call paternity. And so I'm gonna lay hands on them. You'll pray for me, there's a lot of them. Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna lay hands on them and what's we'll called switch paternity because now as, as members of this church, I am their pastor and, and my hand being laid on them is to seal them into this house so that uh, we can grow together. We've already told them, now listen, the time to check out other churches is before you join. You know, once you join, you're saying, I have looked at other places, I've been other places, I've seen them, but I feel God calling me to this church, to this pastor, to this vision. And so we thank God for them. So we're going to start laying hands on them. Come, come.
position you into this place is a place where God is going to use you for your gifts and your skills to be manifest. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And we speak to you the anointing of this house to be on your life. That God has switched paternity. And now you are going to step forth into a brand new beginning. anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will be fruitful and multiply and that your gift and skills will come forth in a brand new way we anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus we welcome you to this home where the Lord shall use you where the blessing of the Lord shall be upon you we seal you as a member of this house Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we anoint you as members of this house. And we speak God's blessing upon you as you find your place and fit in and do the work of the ministry here where God has planted you. Jesus, we anoint you. And we speak God's best for you. That as your time here begins afresh, that God will use you mightily all the concerns of your heart he shall answer in Jesus name ah we anoint the Roe family all of them 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 and the blessing of the Lord be upon you the grace of God be with you and may you see God do great things not only for you but also for your children as you're planted in this place may they grow as you grow Become strong oaks in this house and in the kingdom. This we decree in Jesus' name. Can we put our hands together for our new members? All right, all right. Now, 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 now we need we need a picture. So you have to tell us. I think we got to put some, some in here, some in the back, and and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stand somewhere up here, and let's just let let the photographers do what the photographers do. So I don't know how we're going to do this, babe. You're going to have to help me. So seeing how this is your, your first Sunday as members, I want to serve you all communion first. So Jim, help me again. I need them all to come back down on the floor and then turn around and face me. Hallelujah. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to to me that on this first Sunday as you have made a public declaration of your commitment to this house, to this pastor, and to this vision that I want to serve you communion 
because your joining has added to us. You bring your gifts, your skills, your anointings, your abilities to this house. We were lacking until you joined up. We were lacking. And all of you, you know from the classes, now that you join, find a place to serve. Find a place to let your talents and abilities grow because we want you to be the best you can be. I promise you a few things as your pastor. I mean you nothing but good. I mean you nothing but good. God has put me on this earth as your pastor not to benefit me, but to benefit you. My job is to help you find your calling, refine your calling, do whatever God has put in your spirit. Some of you know what God has called you to do. Others of you don't. That's okay. We will find it together so that you can be the best person that you can be. And here's a wonderful thing. It not only affects you, it affects your children. And the glory of God is going to be manifested in your life as we grow together. I love you. I thank you. I honor you. Listen, I take this personally. There are many, many churches across this city you could have joined. When you join, I take it personally that you've joined to the vision that God has put in my heart and my spirit. I appreciate it. I promise you, I will lead you in the fear of the admonition of God and help you as you grow and become what God wants you to be. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. And on behalf of these new members, we lift up your name. We thank you for your son who died for us. We thank you for your son who gives us life eternal. Now, Lord, as we come to the table, we take the bread. It's our prayer, O oh God, that you will bless it and sanctify it. That as we eat of it, we shall be mindful of the sacrifice you made when you gave your body to be beaten and abused to pay the price for us. We thank you. We love you. And we are yours. In Jesus' name. We take the cup, your blood of the new covenant. And we thank you for the fact that you have chosen us. You brought us up from death, out of our graves. And we honor you and we ask you to bless this so that as we drink of it, your grace will be dispensed to us. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to come serve you all. You will take it. Don't move yet. When I finish serving everyone, you'll go back to your seats so that we can all eat it together. Amen. Bless you. Go back to your seats. Elders.
ministers, please come. The Till my trophies, till my trophies at last I Shall we all stand? If you have received already, you can stay in your seat, but the ushers will lead you. Come to the front, get it, go back to your seat, and we will all eat together someday.
back the top portion. This is the body of the Lord. Broken for you on the cross of Calvary. Eat and be made strong. Thank you, Jesus. The church has been doing this for 2,000 years. Celebrating his sacrifice. As you peel back the second part, this is the blood of the Lord shed for you because he loves you. Drink and be made whole. I'm saved by his power divine. Pass the Pass the equals down to the side and the ushers will collect them. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm and sing But it's Women's Month. It's Women's Month, and we have a presentation uh, from Minister Heather Howell. Is going to come. Oh, oh, Minister Suzanne Sobers first is going to come, and and we want to 
honor the women and we want to salute women. You may be seated for a moment and then I'll get to the word. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. So a happy Women's History Month, DBC ladies. Let me hear some noise. So it is my pleasure to introduce the theme, which is celebrating women who tell our uh, stories. And through 2023, the National Women's History Alliance will encourage recognition of women, past and present, who have been active in all forms of media and storytelling, including print, radio, TV, stage, screen, blogs, podcasts, and more. Now, the theme honors women in every community who have devoted their lives and talents to producing art, pursuing truth, and reflecting the human condition decade after decade. And from the earliest storytellers throughout journalists have experienced been captured widely of artists and teachers. And these include authors, songwriters, scholars, playwrights, performers, and grandmothers throughout time. Women have long been instrumental in passing on our heritage in words and in print to communicate the lessons of those who've come before us. Women's story and the larger human story expands our understanding and strengthens our connection with each other. Now here at DBC, we also want to recognize and honor these brave, accomplished, and influential women who told and continue to tell our stories. Today and over the years ahead, their dedication and shared desire to give voices to the voiceless are critical to keeping us informed, entertained, and aware. So it is now my pleasure to welcome Minister Heather Howell, who's gonna tell us about one of these women who has changed history. And as Heather is coming, I also want to invite all the ladies, men you could join us too, on Tuesday at 7.30, the women's ministry will be on the prayer line, so please join us then. Minister Heather. Thank you, Minister Susan. Grace and peace, DBC. It's my pleasure to spotlight a woman whose legacy is not well known, who broke barriers as an African-American female journalist and foreign correspondent, who reported on historic events of her time, including the civil rights movement, and ultimately considered the first lady of the black press. This phenomenal woman was Ethel Lois Payne. Allow me to just share a brief um, history about Ethel. Ethel Payne was born, raised, and educated in the south side of Chicago. Following her education in 1948, Ethel traveled to Japan to work for the Army Special Services Club. When the Korean War began in 1950, Ethel wrote about the treatment of black troops. Although President Truman had ordered the military to be integrated, General McCarthy refused to desegregate the troops. Ethel recorded the segregation of the soldiers, the racial slurs that were used against them, and about the babies that were abandoned as orphans because they were born to black mothers excuse me, Japanese mothers and black fathers. As a result of her work covering the Korean War, in 1951, Ethel was recruited to join the Chicago Defender, a newspaper for, African -Ameri for the African American community. While, while at the Defender, Ethel wrote about unpopular but important stories, including the adoption crisis for African American children and the struggles of unwed mothers. Ethel became the Washington correspondent for the Defender and was the first African-American woman to join the White House Press Corps. What an achievement. While in presidential press conferences, Ethel was not intimidated. She questioned President Eisenhower about his choices in regards to civil rights, specifically segregation and discrimination throughout the country. 
Shortly after Brown versus Board of Education was passed, Ethel publicly prodded President Eisenhower to support the movement ahead with desegregation, which irritated the president and many others. After this, the president refused to call upon her for the remainder of his presidency, and the press secretary tried to invalidate her as a journalist. Regardless of the backlash, Ethel persevered and continued to work to bring more awareness to the civil rights movement. She reported on Martha Park, Parks, and, excuse me, she reported on Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott, and she interviewed Martin Luther King Jr. before he made national headlines. She also authored the series, The South at the Crossroads, which focused on the civil rights movement. As a foreign correspondent, Ethel was present for the Asian African Summit in Indonesia, the meeting between Vice President Nixon and the King of Ghana, as well as covering the Vietnam War. In 1970, Ethel broke another barrier, barrier and became the first African American woman to appear on a national network as a radio and television commentator. Ethel passed away in 1991 at the age of 80. Unfortunately, Ethel's legacy is not well publicized, but being brought to the forefront through biographies and articles written about her and her incredible career in recent years. In 2022, the White House Correspondents Association honored Ethel Payne by creating a Lifetime Achievement Award in her memory. Through her voice in journalism, Ethel Payne was indeed a woman who told our story. God bless you. And the shame of it is I have never heard of her. We have so many blacks, African Americans, African Caribbeans who have done so much. And our history still in 2023, we are still finding out things. that we, I have studied black history for years. I am, I'm, 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 well, y'all know me. Y'all were here last week. Uh, but, but we're still finding out things that were done by us that have been hidden from us. But somebody say, hidden no more. Amen, amen. Well, get your Bibles, it's preaching time. I want to thank, thank you, Minister Heather. Thank you, Minister Sobers, for sharing with us and making us aware of what's going on. It's going to be a wonderful Women's History Month. Get your Bibles, let's go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number one. When you have it, please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Again, that is Luke's gospel. If you're a new believer, Matthew, Mark, Luke. If you're an old believer, you ought to know where it is. I have been preaching out of the gospel of Luke for the past few weeks. We were in Luke 4 for the month of February. And as we begin Women's History Month, the Lord just led me to this text and to this story that is kind of familiar. And yet I have found that sometimes the familiar text, the familiar stories needs to be reviewed so that we can get fresh insight and fresh application to our lives. Somebody say amen. Amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, we're going to begin at verse number 26, and we're going to read through verse 37. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and when she saw him she was troubled I bet you would be troubled if you're standing in your kitchen and an angel showed up she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner 
of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I'm a virgin and I know not a man? And the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, that old hag of your cousin, She's pregnant now. She had also conceived a son in her old age. She old, but she's pregnant. And this is the sixth month with her who had been called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Y'all better pray for me this morning. For with God, nothing. I don't care what it is. I don't care how long you've been waiting. When God get ready to do what only God can do, for with God, somebody shout, nothing shall be impossible. I do not know if I'm going to be able to get through this whole thing this week, but thank God I'm invited back next Sunday. So, I'll... But this text, you know, we all think we know the, the, the Christmas story and we know Mary, but, but this text, you know, you learn things in Sunday school. And because you learn in Sunday school, when you hear it as an adult, you think, I know it. But the truth of the matter is, it's simplified so a child can understand it. But after you live life a little bit, you can visit those same things and find new meaning and new insight. For a few moments, I want to speak to you from the subject, chosen to do the impossible. Chosen to do, would you look at your neighbor and tell him, I've been chosen to do some impossible things. Tell somebody else, you've been chosen to do some impossible things. Heavenly Father, bless this word. Charge it with your power. Anoint your servant, O God, that he may clearly and definitively express what's contained herein in this text. That your people will be blessed and edified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all stop, y'all stop. Don't do that. I'm ready to shout now. Don't do that. I'm ready to shout now. Because just the reading of the word, just the reading of it, I ain't even got to explain it, just the reading of it. Mary is one of the most important women in all of human history. You must understand that from the Garden of Eden, when Eve ate the fruit and passed it to her husband, God said, I'm going to cause the seed of the woman to stomp on the head of Satan and destroy. God had been waiting generations for one woman. I want you to understand this. From Abraham and Sarah and Rachel and Rebecca and all of the women, Esther and, and Deborah and all of the women that are contained in the scriptures. God had been waiting for one woman. 
One woman who would be able to handle the pressure of being chosen. Because we often think being chosen means it's going to be a cakewalk. But speak to anybody who's been chosen, anybody who's had to do exceptional things, they will tell you, if it hadn't been for God, I want you to understand, God looked down the annals of time and waited for one woman through whom he would send his son who would bear the sins of the world but he decided he wasn't going to let Jesus come like Melchizedek and just appear he decided he's going to come through a womb and he was waiting all of history for one woman actually actually let me let me let me say this I, I, it really isn't right to say woman he was waiting for one girl because Mary was about 15, 16, 17. See, in, in, in the Jewish society, you got married early. You got married early. Like the life expectancy wasn't as long, and so you would got, get married early. Mary was a teenager. Do I have any, anybody here, a girl who's 16, 17, 15? Anybody, anybody who's 16? Come, 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 come. Come, go. I'm not going to embarrass you. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise you. I'm not going to embarrass you. Turn up the lights a little bit. It's a little dark. Turn up the lights. Turn up the lights. Come here, girl. What's your name? Sarah. What a perfect name. <laughs> okay. Mary was about Sarah's age. Now, when you were a teenager, not back then, but now, when you're a teenager now, you think you know everything. Not, not you, Sarah. Not you. Not you. <laughs> but, 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 but women, you know, when you, after you've lived life a little bit, do, do, do you not look back at your teenage years and think, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. I thought I, you know, I'm hanging with my friends and we think we know everything and we, we argue. And, and you get to your 30s and you look back and you're like, I didn't know nothing. God did not choose a grown woman to bring forth his son. He chose a teenager. Somebody who's young and innocent. Somebody who's not been tainted by the world. We're talking about you, talk about you. Okay? And, and, and he chose her Amongst all, the Bible tells us all the women were hoping it would be them. Everybody was hoping they would be God's chosen vessel to bring forth the Messiah because they thought bringing forth the Messiah was going to be glorious. They did not know that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts. Are. So, so God looked and found a teenager, young girl, not a woman, a young girl who was still coming into life who has so much potential, and God said, with all the other women that have come through time, Mary, I'm cho choosing you. Thank you. Thank you. Give Sarah a hand. Give Sarah a hand. Give Sarah a hand. A young girl. The Bible says, the Bible says, in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel comes to the city of Nazareth, and he comes to a virgin espoused to be married. Now, now, please understand something. When it says the six months, what's it talking about? See, six months earlier, Gabriel had showed up to a man by the name of Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest, and he was offering incense, and the angel appears to Zechariah and says, Zechariah, your wife is about to be pregnant. And Zechariah, who's an old man who has lived through life and have had, listen to me, disappointment after disappointment. Do you not know disappointment can stop you from believing God? When, 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 when you get to a certain stage of life and, and, and this didn't happen and that didn't happen or, or something terrible happened and you, 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 th this was supposed to be great and it turned out to be terrible. After a while, you stop believing. You've built up walls. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking right to you. You've built up walls and nothing, yeah, you, because you don't, you don't want to be disappointed again. Is there anybody in here or anybody watching who knows what I'm talking about? I, I just can't take another disappointment. 
But the angel Gabriel comes and announces to Zechariah, your wife's about to have a baby, and Zechariah does not believe him. Now, I want you to get this. Zechariah is a priest. Listen to me. Zechariah is a priest. He, he has spent his whole life serving God. And when God sends him a message, he says, no, nah, I don't believe you. The way some of you, some of you, you're in a season of your life where God's about to do the impossible. But, 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 but life has beaten you down. You've been so disappointed. You've been so hurt that you are not able to stretch your faith anymore. But I came with a word from the Lord to tell you it ain't over yet. Zechariah, you old. Hey, hey. And not only are you old, Elizabeth is old. Well past the age of having babies. But God is the God of the And so, so there's a story of, 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 of the birth of Jesus. It's really a story of, of paradoxes. It's, it's a story of on the one end, you have an old woman who gets pregnant after trying to get pregnant all her life. And she is barren. Now, you must understand, it's difficult in the 21st century to appreciate barrenness because we live in a time where we kill our babies. But back in that day, if you didn't have a child, it was considered a curse. So she lived her whole life smiling in public but crying in private. She is the wife of a priest. If anybody should get pregnant. She's gone her entire life with other women sick of her. Yeah, she ain't get pregnant yet. You, ladies, you know y'all can be... Uh, I don't mean y'all here. Y'all are the salt of the earth here. I'm talking about the other women out there. Her whole life, she's barren. You know Zachariah had it hard because, you know, every time they lay in the bed, she complained to him, you ain't giving me a baby yet. He's like, what, what, what do you want me to do? I'm doing the best I can. Baby, I've been giving him my best shot. <laughs> what more you want from me? Hey, hey, hey th th that, that messes, with, especially back in that day, messed with women's head. It, it messed with, with, with Abraham and, not this one, Sarah's head so much. That Sarah, y'all know the story, Abraham's wife Sarah said to Abraham, give me a child lest I die. And she wanted baby so bad, she said, listen, you see that little handmaiden right there, Hagar? Go into her, have a baby with her, and I'm going to claim it for mine. That's how bad they wanted a child. And so here we have, uh, are y'all with me? Yeah. So here we have the angel Gabriel coming, and he has announced six months earlier to Elizabeth and Zechariah. By the way, Zechariah's lack of faith caused the angel Gabriel to cause him to be dumb, unable to speak. Y'all know the story. Uh, because because Zechariah, the priest, did not, be, you could be have, in clergy, you could have a collar on, and you could be walking with the Lord a long time and still don't believe God. That's a scary thing. You up there serving incense, giving up praise, but you don't believe what you're doing. Or you believe you're so past the age or the stage that you will not believe when God sent you a direct message. And, Zach, and Zachariah rebuffed Gabriel and said, I don't believe it. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of the Lord. Because you won't believe me, you're not going to speak until this thing come to pass. Notice, I love this about God. He didn't allow Zachariah's lack of faith for God to change his mind. Oh, see, it would have been easy to say, since you don't believe, I'm going to pass Elizabeth and go on to somebody else. But no, when God has something for you, I want to tell somebody this morning, when God has something for you, he's going to get it to you because God is more committed to your success than you are. God is not going to allow your lack of faith to stop him from doing what's got to be done. Somebody put your hands together and give God a praise right there. So, 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 
Six months earlier, Gabriel had gone. Now, you must understand, Gabriel is an archangel. There are, there are levels of angels in heaven as there are levels of jobs and, and titles on earth. And Gabriel is an archangel. He's one of the leading angels. We know that there, are, there were at least three archangels. Uh, there was the angel of Michael, who is the warring archangel. There is the angel, there was the angel Lucifer, who was the worshiping archangel. He's the one that fell down and now we call him the devil. Uh, and there was Gabriel, who was the messenger, messenger archangel. He's the one, usually in the scripture, you see he brings the messages. I love this. He is a herald. We don't understand the term herald in our time because we now have the internet and we have Facebook and we have... Instagram and all that stuff. But before, before all of that, in, in ancient times, when, when the king had a message to give, he would give it to heralds. And the heralds would leave the, the, the palace and go all through the kingdom. And they would come into the town square. Now, we don't really have town squares in America. But if you've ever gone to Europe, there's still towns that have town squares where, where people would gather to get the latest news. And the herald would come. And you've seen it in the movies. He, he's dressed a certain way. And he comes and rolls up. Hear ye, hear ye. Thus saith his majesty the king. Blah, 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 blah. And the herald would speak. Now, everything the herald said had authority. But it never had authority from the herald. See, because when you're a herald, you don't function by your authority. You function by the authority of who sent you. You don't function with your own authority. There's authority behind you. See, and, and that's what you have to understand, even those of us in, in the ministry. We have to understand we don't speak with our authority. Uh, when, when, when I stand up here to speak, I'm not speaking as Curtis Douglas. I'm the herald of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And it's not my authority. I'm speaking through his authority. He got to back me up. People say to me sometimes, Bishop, you speak so confidently. I do because it's not about me. I know I serve a God that's got the power to back. Besides, I don't say nothing he don't tell me to say. See, the herald never had the, the right to change what the king has decreed. Tell all the people that want to change the Bible and want to say the Bible says things that the Bible don't say. All of y'all have disqualified yourself because you don't have the right to change it. You might not like it. It might not be your cup of tea, but you is only a herald. And the herald don't speak for himself. He speaks for the king. When you stand up and you speak in the name of the Lord, you better say what he said, nothing more and nothing less. Because you are, it's not your words, it's his words. Somebody say amen. amen. Comes to a virgin who is a spouse to a man named Joseph. Oh, God help me get through this. So we, we don't understand in the 21st century, this whole thing about being a spouse or, or betrothed to, 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 to Joseph. Because in, in, the, in the West, a wedding is a one-day affair. But if you know anybody from the East, weddings in the East, whether it's an Indian wedding, whether it's an Asian wedding, they, they go on for days. And there is a long process between the engagement and, 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 and the wedding feast. And it's a feast. It's a feast. I don't have time to, to, to delve into it, but, but we don't fully comp comprehend what it means when the scripture talks about that she was espoused to a man named Joseph. What, what we do understand is that, that Joseph and Mary were getting married. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. So they're getting married uh, and, and, and the Bible says that, that she's a virgin. That's how it was back in the day. Now, now you have to understand something. Um, she's getting married, getting ready to marry this man, and she is, uh, she's kept herself, and, and, and she's, she's waiting for her husband, and, 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 and the angel comes and says to her, Hail, thou highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among you. If I can get through this today, I'm good. He says, first of all, you're not, you're not just favored. Other women have been favored. But Mary, 
believe it or not, God's been waiting for you. God has been waiting for you because God has an assignment for you that only you can fulfill. Now, 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 understand something. Mary was not the only virgin in the town. She wasn't the only one, but she was the chosen one. You got to understand, God has assignments for you. And most of the time, we wish God would use other people. But I came here to tell you, God has chosen you to do some things that he needs done that nobody else can do. Would you look at your neighbor, point your finger at them, and tell them God's cho chosen you, God's chosen you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, says, he says, the angel comes in unto her and, and says unto her, first of all, Hail, hello, hey there, look, look, pay attention. Thou, thou art highly favored. I want to decree over some of y'all, God is positioning you into a season of highly favored. God is getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you because you are highly favored. Your assignment is not Mary's assignment. She's done her assignment. But God's got some assignments for you that, that he's been waiting on you to get to where you are at this point of your life so he can do in you and hey, through you some things that need to be done in your family, in your home, in your business, in your church. God has called you and he has positioned you because you are highly favored. Second thing, he says, not only are you favored, highly favored, the Lord is with thee. It's always hard for me to talk about the Lord being with you. Because it means, Mary, you're going about your life and you had no idea that through everything you went through, the Lord was with you. Some of the stuff that you got out of, that you should have gotten caught up in, the Lord. Is there anybody here that can look back over your life for some things that you know, you know, you know, your friends hung out with you and y'all did the same thing and God, God found a way to get you out of it and they got caught. Hold up, hold up. I was talking to the ministers this morning in class and I was telling them there's some things God has done for us that, that, that we can't even tell other people. We, we, can't, we, we don't tell some of the stuff in the testimony line because you don't want nobody to know some of the mess you've done and God found a way. Why? Because the Lord had been with you. I, 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 I told you I stole this line from my friend Archbishop Rochford. I, he says, I, I want to thank God for the things he did. <laughs> But I also want to thank God for the things he hid. <laughs> There's some stuff that I have done that none of y'all need to know. <laughs> There's some stuff that you have done your children don't need to know. There's some things that have happened in your life, some decisions you've made that if God hadn't covered it up, you would not be able to stand with your head held up. But I want to thank God for the fact that he's been with me. Through every danger, toil, and snare, the Lord has been with me. I haven't always made the right decision, but the Lord has been with me. I've sometimes messed up, but the Lord has been. Is there anybody here or anybody watching who will give God a praise for being with you? I want to praise you, Jesus, uh, for being with me. I want to thank you, Lord, that you have been with me every step of the way. I didn't always do it right. Uh, I didn't always make the right decision. But I want to thank God. He's been with me. Mm -hmm. Calm down, Douglas. Calm down. You're highly favored. And, and fa favor means honor and grace that, that, that God has honored you and he's been with you he has walked with you and I want to submit to you that, that as, as the, 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 the great poem Footprint says the, the times you didn't see his footprints is because he was carrying you he will never leave you or forsake you even when you mess up and other people write you off He'll write you back in. There's some of us that we can look back over our lives and we see when people turn their back on us, but God never turned his back on us. He was always there. He's Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is always there. He's Jehovah Shammah, the God that is with us. He's Jehovah Shammah, the God that stands beside us and helps us through every crisis and every trial and every trouble. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. 
You're highly favored. That's one. The Lord is with you. That's two. Here's the third one. Blessed art thou. Whew, whew. Mary, you have not done anything you think has been noticed. But God has noticed you. See, a lot of times we want to be noticed by people. But can I tell you, the best thing is to be noticed by God. There are people who will never give you your flowers. There are people who will never applaud you. There are some people who no matter what you do, and for some of you, they're in your family. They will never give you what you are due, but that's all right. I want you to know you've been noticed by God. God sees all the things you've done, all of the times you've helped somebody, and they never turned around and said thank you. God has noticed you. I want to tell you, keep doing right. Keep doing good. I don't allow people's negativity to stop you because God notices what other people ignore. I said God notices what other people ignore. Stop being worried about who don't see. You might not see, but I serve a God who sees it all. The Bible says he sits high and looks low. He's able to see what other people ignore. He's able to see what other people try to disqualify. I want to encourage somebody. Keep doing right. Keep doing good. Even when the people mess with you, do good to them that despitefully use you. In spite of the people who talk about you like a dog, don't you sink down to their level. When they go low, you go high because God is a witness. God is seeing what you're doing. God is seeing the fact that you are doing what his word says. And by the way, when the Lord sees, the Lord will move. The Bible says God will bless you. Other people may try to pull you down, but God will bless you. Other people may try to stop you, but I came to announce to you and to you watching, there's a blessing on your life. God has moved in such a way there's some things coming that have been already set up. You didn't see it, but because you're blessed, somebody shout, I'm blessed. Amen. Notice, notice, she's blessed by God himself. What I want is to have God bless me. What I want is to be blessed of God. What I want is for God to know that he, I'm faithful to the calling that he's given me. And when I'm faithful, he will, oh, he will bless you. I came to announce prophetically over your life. God's about to bless you. God's about to move in your life. God's about to do for you that which is impossible. Do I have anybody in here who will say, Lord, bless me? I've opened up my hands to be blessed. I've lifted up my voice to be blessed. I'm not perfect, but I want to be blessed. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing are about to fall on you. Do you have the faith to believe it? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that will say I'm ready for God to bless me? In blessing, he will bless me. In establishing, he'll establish me. I'm ready for God to do what only God can do. You try to curse me, but God has blessed me. You can't curse what God has blessed. I'm going up to a whole nother level because I'm walking in the favor and the blessing of the Lord. If that's you, throw up your hand, open your mouth, and give God a praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise him because you're blessed. Praise him because you're blessed. Praise him because you're blessed. Whether you feel like it or not, whether you can see it or not, I came to declare over your life, you are blessed. If you have the faith to receive it, open your mouth and praise him. favored. I'm blessed. And I, you're blessed. 
right where you are, right where you are. And because you're blessed, God's going to do for you what he doesn't do for everybody else because you're walking in the blessing of the Lord. Somebody give God a show. Yeah, 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 I want you to go high five, five people, tell them I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, yeah, yeah, tell them I'm blessed, oh! I'm blessed, I'm blessed. in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I go out and when I come in. I'm blessed because God has chosen me. God has an assignment for me. And I might not know it yet, but it's on the way. And I'm getting my blessing so I can do God's bidding. I said I'm getting my blessing so I can do God's bidding. I came to tell you, prophetically, you ought to step out in faith because God's blessing is on your life to do something great. Shout it, Remain standing for a minute. I'm finished. Remain standing if you can. Th th there are three categories. Either you are not blessed and you're ordinary, or on the negative side of it, you are cursed, or on the positive side of it, you're blessed. You're either ordinary, cursed, or blessed. And for many of us, we've grown up in times and, and, and things have happened in our lives and you thought, I'm cursed. We've come from some situations, from some family circles and you, you or, or, or if you feel cursed, you feel, well, ain't nothing special about me. I don't come from a great pedigree. I'm just ordinary. And Mary thought that. As she was growing up, we don't know much about her parentage. We don't know much about the, what she did before. We don't know much about her until this moment. When she stepped from being ordinary to being blessed. Now listen, listen. This means she was blessed when she didn't know it. God was with her when she didn't know it. She was highly favored when she didn't know it. Let me ask you a question. What don't you know about you that God's getting ready to show you? What don't you know about you in this stage of your life that God's getting ready to open up your eyes and show you, and by the way, show the world because this was not kept under a secret or in the bushel this was done and now thousands of years later we still talk about Mary as a matter of fact she is so blessed that the Catholic Church has gone too far she is so blessed they've gone too far and they talk about the fact well, well the, the Immaculate Conception she was born without saying no 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 come bring it back baby. bring it back bring it back Bring it back. The Bible don't say that. All we need to do is say what the Bible says. But Mary is so blessed that the world talks about her. This little teenage girl who was just going about her business. And one day the angel showed up and said, there's more in you than you know. And 
And I'm come to tell you, we're going to go back to this next week. Come on back, because I got some other stuff in here. I know you heard it in Sunday school, but it's a little bit more. There's more in you than you know. And let me close by going back to the beginning and say this. Whether you're young like Mary or you're old like Elizabeth, God can still do the miracle. I love God. I love God. You young, it ain't on nothing. And God's got the miracle to make you pregnant. You old and have given up hope. And God's able to make you pregnant. Wherever you're found on the spectrum, wherever you are in the midst of your journey, God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's a God of all, uh -huh. every promise to. Don't give up on God. Don't, Don't give, give up on God. Because he, he won't give up on you. He's able. Stop, 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 right stop, stop. Because we're, we're about to go into a conniption right there. Whether you're on the side of Mary at the beginning or you're on the side of Elizabeth, God was able to do the same thing for both of them. Because your womb is not too young and your womb is not too old. Your vision is not too young and your vision is not too old. God is able. Don't let where you are stop you from believing where God is taking you. I decree, my God, I can see it over you. I can see it over some of you. God has sent this word and it's causing me to stop right here because this is a prophetic announcement to you that your life is about to change. Your life is about to, and it's about to change for the better. Don't be afraid. You might not understand what God is doing. You might understand, not understand why you get this message now. But God is about to change your life for the better. And like Mary, you got to walk around knowing, I didn't know it before, but I'm highly favored. The Lord is with me, and I'm walking in my blessing. Come on back next week, because there's more in the text. He's God of all things. Every promise. Don't give up on God. Uh -huh. Don't, Don't give up. Because he won't. Because he won't give up on you. Come on. He's able. He's able. Yes, he is. I'm about to lose my mind. I gotta let y'all go home. Listen, listen. I'm gonna end the sermon, and we're gonna collect the offering, and then the uh, the ministers will be in the front. If this sermon spoke to your spirit, I want you to come, and they're gonna pray for you, and what's called in in, in church lingo, seal this into your spirit. You know, you, you, you know God was talking to you. I don't know your personal story. I don't have to know. My job is to listen to the Spirit. I'm a herald. I'm a herald. And God has spoken to you today. They're going to be up here to lay hands on you. If you're here and you're not saved, you don't know Jesus. Listen, listen. Before you can enjoy all of this, you got to have a relationship with Jesus. Come on up to any of them and say, I need to be saved. We will lead you in the sinner's prayer. We will pray for you and bring you into the kingdom of God. And as you leave this house, this week, here's a lesson for this week. Walk around knowing I'm highly favored, the Lord is with me, and I'm blessed. Now, now, the enemy's going to send crazy things at you, but that's all right. I'm 
highly favored. The Lord is with me. And I'm blessed. And God is able to take little insignificant Mary, little insignificant me, little insignificant you. We ain't nobody. We ain't got no silver spoons in our mouth. Ain't none of us multi-millionaires yet. But God is able to do amazing things with us. See, because the power is not in you. The power is in him. You just need to be ready for when your moment comes. My God. He's able. Oh, oh, oh. Get your tithes and your offering ready. Oh, 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 uh -huh. oh he's able. He's able. Oh, 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 I feel God up in this place. Bring it down, bring it down. Listen. Get your tithes and your offering. If you're a member of this house, whether you're here or whether you're watching virtually, it is your responsibility to share in the cost in the, of the running of the kingdom and doing what needs to be done. Don't be the kind of person who goes into a restaurant, orders an expensive meal, and when the bill comes, you get up and run out. Such were some of you. The Bible says, if you, if you are a believer, you are to pay your tithes, give your offering, because this is how the kingdom is kept. Beside, beside. You're not, you're, not, you're not doing it only for us. You're doing it for yourself because when you give, God blesses you. I told somebody the other day, you know, you, you've come into this house. The house is already built. The chairs you're sitting on, somebody else paid for. The lights, all of that stuff was put in. Now that you're here, you are to prepare for other people who are coming and for other things that need to be done. Somebody say amen. And so for every member of the church and, and, and all, of, all, of, all of the new members who joined today, they know, because we have one of the classes, I make it clear to them, if you're going to join the church, pay your tithes. If you're not going to pay your tithes, don't join. Because I know the Bible says there's a blessing when you pay your tithes. I have no problem uh, talking about giving because I've been paying tithes, I told you before, since I was 13 years old. I've been paying tithes since I was 13 years old. God is obligated to bless me. Before you got here, God blessed me. If you're crazy enough to leave, God's going to keep blessing me. He's able. He's able. I, I just threw that in there. That was really funny. So, so every member, every regular worshiper, you might not be a member yet, but this is where you're being fed. Pay your tithes. Give your offering and watch God bless you. Am I forgetting anything else? Anything else I got? Father, I've given them your word. I gave them what you gave me. I pray that it falls on good ground and that their spirits are receptive to receive that which has been given. As we go out this week, bless us, bless us, bless us, bless us, bless us. You know the issues that are coming, the problems that are coming, but you've already provided a way of escape. So I thank you for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, that you favored us. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us. Thank you, Lord, that we're walking out in the blessing of God. Thank you that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think. When we haven't even thought about some of the stuff you want to do in our lives, you have blessed us. Now, Lord, as the flock leaves the sanctuary, as we depart one from another, but not from your presence. I pray the blessing of the Lord upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come give your offering. The ministers are here to pray for you if you need prayer. Go in the power of God. In Jesus' name. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday night at Bible study. Tune in to Bible study 7.30 on Wednesday.
I got a word for you. He's able. Oh. Yeah.